Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover how to solve absolute value equations. And specifically, we're going to look at equations with numbers and operations outside of the absolute value. Now I do have an introduction to solving absolute value equations where we start with the basics. If you're new to these types of equations, I do recommend starting there. That link is in the description. Let's jump into number one where we have the absolute value of x minus six equals two. Now the first thing that we need to do when we have an absolute value equation is look to see if the absolute value is isolated on one side of the equation. So it needs to be by itself on one side of the equation. In this example, the absolute value is not isolated. It's not by itself. We are subtracting six from it. That means we need to start by isolating the absolute value. We need to undo that subtraction. The inverse operation of subtraction is addition. So let's add six to the left side of the equation. Whatever we do to one side of an equation, we must do to the other. So add six to the right side as well. Taking a look at the left side of the equation, these sixes cancel each other out. So now we have the absolute value of x equals, and then on the right side of the equation, two plus six gives us eight. So now we have the absolute value of x equals eight. Now keep in mind, we know that the absolute value of positive eight equals eight, and we know that the absolute value of negative eight equals eight. So x can be eight or negative eight. So this is where we write two equations. We have two options here, two scenarios, and that's going to give us two solutions. So x equals eight or x equals negative eight. Now here for this example, the variable is already isolated. We have x equals eight or x equals negative eight. So we are done here. These are our two solutions. Now in our other examples, we will have to go through additional steps in order to isolate the variable. So you'll see what that looks like again as we go through our other examples. Now, once we have our solutions, we can check them by plugging them into the original equation. So let's come to the side here. So we have x equals eight. So plug in eight for x. So the absolute value of eight minus six equals two. And then we have x equals negative eight. So the absolute value of negative eight minus six equals two. So let's start by checking x equals eight. Well, the absolute value of eight is eight, and then we have eight minus six. That does give us two, so we are correct there, x equals eight. As far as x equals negative eight, the absolute value of negative eight is eight, so we have eight minus six, which again equals two, so we are correct there as well, x equals negative eight. So our two solutions, eight and negative eight. Let's move on to number two. For number two, we have two times the absolute value of g plus seven equals 20. Is the absolute value isolated? No, so we need to start there. Now I do wanna mention, we cannot use the distributive property here with absolute value. Those are not the same as parentheses. So just something to keep in mind. Again, we cannot distribute when it comes to absolute value. We are multiplying the absolute value by two, so we need to undo that. The inverse operation of multiplication is division. So let's divide the left side by two. Whatever we do to one side of an equation, we must do to the other. So divide the right side by two as well. Now on the left side, these twos cancel each other out. So we have the absolute value of g plus seven equals, and then on the right side, 20 divided by two gives us 10. So now we have the absolute value of g plus seven equals 10. 
the absolute value is now isolated. And now that it is isolated, we know that the absolute value of g plus 7 has to equal 10. This gives us two options, two solutions. g plus 7 can either equal 10 or negative 10 because the absolute value of 10 is 10 and the absolute value of negative 10 is 10. So we need to write two equations. We have g plus 7 equals 10 or g plus 7 equals negative 10. Now we need to solve those to get our solutions. Let's start with g plus 7. So let's isolate that variable of g. So we need to subtract 7 from the left side. That means we need to subtract 7 from the right side. These 7s cancel each other out. g is now isolated, so we have g equals. And then on the right side, 10 minus 7 gives us 3. So g equals 3. Now let's solve g plus 7 equals negative 10. So let's subtract 7 from the left side and the right side. These 7s cancel each other out. So g is now isolated. g equals, and then on the right side, negative 10 minus 7 gives us negative 17. So g equals negative 17. So those are our two solutions. Now let's check those solutions by plugging them in for g and seeing if they work. So we can come to the side here. So we have 2 times the absolute value of 3 plus 7 equals 20. And then 2 times the absolute value of negative 17 plus 7 equals 20. And let's start with 2 times the absolute value of 3 plus 7. 3 plus 7 is 10. So we have 2 times the absolute value of 10. The absolute value of 10 is 10. So now we have 2 times 10, which is 20. So we are correct there. g equals 3. Let's do 2 times the absolute value of negative 17 plus 7 now. Let's start with negative 17 plus 7. That gives us negative 10. So now we have 2 times the absolute value of negative 10. The absolute value of negative 10 is 10. So now we have 2 times 10. 2 times 10 is 20. So we are correct there as well. G equals negative 17. So again, our two solutions here for this example 3 and negative 17. Let's move on to number 3. Now let's take a look at number 3 where we have 5 times the absolute value of 3x minus 15. Then we end the absolute value plus 4 equals 49. Now the first thing that we need to do when solving an absolute value equation is to isolate the absolute value. We are multiplying that absolute value by 5 and then adding 4. So we need to undo that addition first. The inverse operation of addition is subtraction, so let's subtract 4 from the left side of the equation. That means we need to subtract 4 from the right side as well. These 4s cancel each other out, so now we have 5 times the absolute value of 3x minus 15 equals, and then on the right side, 49 minus 4 gives us 45. And now we have 5 times the absolute value of 3x minus 15 equals 45. So we need to undo the multiplication now. The inverse operation of multiplication is division. So let's divide the left side by 5. That means we need to divide the right side by 5 as well. These 5s cancel each other out, and now we have the absolute value of 3x minus 15 equals, and then on the right side, 45 divided by 5 
gives us nine. So now we have the absolute value of three X minus 15 equals nine. So the absolute value is now isolated. Now we know that the absolute value of three X minus 15 has to equal nine or negative nine. The absolute value of nine equals nine and the absolute value of negative nine equals nine. So we need to write two equations. We have three X minus 15 equals nine or three X minus 15 equals negative nine. So let's come to the side here where we have more room and solve these equations. So we have three X minus 15 equals nine or three X minus 15 equals negative nine. Let's start by solving three X minus 15 equals nine. So we need to undo that subtraction first. Let's add 15 to the left side of the equation and then to the right side as well. These 15s cancel each other out. So we have three X equals, and then on the right side of the equation, nine plus 15 gives us 24. So we have three X equals 24, three times X equals 24. Let's isolate the variable of X by dividing the left side of the equation by three. That means we need to divide the right side by three as well. These threes cancel each other out. X is now isolated. So we have X equals, and then on the right side, 24 divided by three gives us eight. So X equals eight. As far as three X minus 15 equals negative nine, let's undo the subtraction first. So add 15 to the left side of the equation. That means we need to add 15 to the right side as well. These 15s cancel each other out. So we have three X equals, and then negative nine plus 15 gives us a positive six. So now we have three X equals six, three times X equals six. Let's isolate X by dividing the left side by three. That means we need to divide the right side by three as well. Taking a look at the left side, these threes cancel each other out. So we have X, equals and then on the right side of the equation six divided by three gives us two so we have x equals two and those are our two solutions now let's check these solutions by plugging them in to the original equation and seeing if they work Let's start with checking X equals eight. So within the absolute value, we have three times eight, which is 24 minus 15. That gives us nine. So we have the absolute value of nine now, five times the absolute value of nine plus four. The absolute value of nine is nine. So we have five times nine plus four. Five times nine plus four is 49 so we are correct there x equals 8. now let's check x equals 2 so within the absolute value we have 3 times 2 which is 6 minus 15 that gives us negative 9 so we have 5 times the absolute value of negative 9 plus 4. the absolute value of negative 9 is 9 so we have 5 times 9 plus four now, five times nine plus four is 49. So we are correct there as well, X equals two. So those are our two solutions. So there you have it. There's how to solve absolute value equations. And specifically, we took a look at absolute value equations with numbers and operations outside of the absolute value. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, Peace.